Hello everyone, Mike Barber here. Remember this program is tape delayed for many reasons, but you will see it still alive and well. Men, women worshiping, men, women listening to the life changing word of God. It'll touch your heart in many ways. The Mike Barber Ministries, this is our church. This is where we live. Enjoy it, because you will be blessed. Nothing else will do. The Lord is in this place. 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 Yes, He is. The Lord is in this place. Mm -hmm. I just really strongly in my heart to let you know that whatever you encountered this past week, this, this weekend, yes, it's, it's been great so far, amen. But we have to remember when we enter those doors, be you. Don't just leave who you are out there. Just bring it in. Everything that you're carrying, all the baggage, the garbage that you're bringing with you throughout the week, throughout the month, just bring it with you. That way together, all of us, we do this every, every week. We come together with everything that we have on us. And we give it all together to him. We bring this to the place of worship. That way he, we know that he's going to be in this place. You showed up. He's already here, so you showed up. So why waste your time? Why waste your time? He's here. You've made the first step to just show up. So I encourage you tonight, just give it all to him. Everything that you thought and everything you didn't know you had. Say, God, everything I am everything I have, and everything I don't even know that I have is yours, God. And I just want you and nothing else. Oh, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you nothing else. Oh, nothing else. No. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. No. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Come on, how many feel? Feel God in this place right now. If you're, sorry, I told you to put your hands up, put them down. If you're new to church, this is what, if the, what you're feeling is just called the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to know, it's, it's this, these moments right here that God is looking to have daily encounters with you. What you're feeling right now is what's going to get you through every situation. What you're feeling right now is going to get you to believe in you again. What you feel right now, there it is. What you feel right now is going to be what helps you reach your babies again. Let me see your, how many of your moms in the house. Let me see your moms. Put your hands down. And 
I know every day you think about your babies. I know some of you, you lost a relationship with your children. But let me tell you, the greatest thing that you can give them is the worshiper that I'm seeing tonight. That's the greatest thing that you can give them. And I want to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that the Lord, if you ask, he will send out ministering angels. And the last time I checked, God's presence and his power and his angels aren't bound by these walls, aren't bound by these chains. I want you to hear me in this. Like, don't think for one second just because your babies don't see you that they don't see you. Because that's the power of God. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, God, when God sees the real in you, you say, Lord, I need you to restore my family again. I need you to restore my relationship with my children again. And I'm telling you, he will do it. But he's looking for the worshiper right here, right now. And when he sees the realness in you from this side, he will send his presence and his angels to your home, right there in your baby's household, right in their crib, right into their bedroom, into their school. And something will shake on the inside of me. You know what? I ain't heard from mama in a long time. I'm going to go see mama today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write her a letter. How many believe God is in the restoration business? Come on, can I get an amen in the house? Like, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then the same healing God then is the same healing God right now in this moment. And I really believe the power in that song, there's nothing else you really believe that, Jesus, there's nothing else I need more than you. Yes, we want our life better. Yes, there's some things that are messed up in our life. There's some things that are real, some things that are not real, guilty, not guilty of. Like, it, does, it doesn't matter. Like, yes, we got a lot of mess. But at the end of the day, if nothing else is all I need is you, Jesus. And for some of you, you may not see your babies again. In Jesus' name, I believe that you will. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But even if you may not see them again on this earth. Hold on, listen, hold on. What's the point in losing them twice if you don't make it to heaven? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you want to shout. I'll give you a chance. But I want that to sink in deep. Like heaven is the end game. Like my wife talked about Thursday night. Heaven is worth it all. But I want you to know, I believe you can get there. God can restore your family. I just didn't, that's what was stirring in my heart tonight, is that what you're feeling right now is the very anchor that you need that's going to get you through everything and anything. It's going to get you in life, and it's going to get you to heaven. It's going to be in control of your marriage, and your family, and your children, and your grandchildren. Jesus and the Holy Spirit is where it's all at. Come on, are are y'all with me tonight? So... We don't, we don't need the big sound system or we don't need the cool lights and you don't need Elevate Worship to experience what you're experiencing right now. You can go back to your bunk and tomorrow morning start your day off saying, Jesus, what I felt last night, I need that right now in this moment. And you don't take on your day until you feel that again. And you watch God get you through everything and anything that you need. So with that said, your hands up now. Come on, hands up now. I ain't going to tell you to put them down. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we just pray right now. You just continue to just commend the hearts. I feel like you just, you've exposed our hearts to tonight. And I just pray you just continue to just do surgery on our heart. Just mend us together. Bring healing where there needs to be healing. And Father, we declare right now that this moment we never forget beautiful moment of worship. There's nothing else we want more than you, Jesus. Even if you don't put together all of our our prayers, even if we don't get everything answered, Father, nothing is going to shake us from living a life for you. I want to lead my family to Jesus. I want to lead my family to heaven. Father, I thank you for that. I pray that weighs heavy on our soul. We take it serious. Father, I thank you for every mom, every daughter here. All their children, Father, just lift it up to you, Jesus. Thank you for this moment. Can we sing it one more time, Tommy? Come on, just can we sing? There's nothing else. And 
And I just want you. Come on, let's sing it. One nothing more time. else. Sing it loud like you never have. Oh, nothing, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want. Come on, lift the roof off. Nothing else. Nothing else. Sing it one more time. Nothing else. Father, we thank you for that. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for these ladies in this worship. We give it to you. Thank you, Father. Come on, God's moving. I don't feel like, come on. Can we just give Jesus all the praise that he deserves? Come on, give him all the praise that he deserves. You know, help me give it up for Elevate Worship. Didn't they do an incredible job? So anointed. So anointed. Can I tell you what I love? I love about these guys. I don't know if you saw it. Maybe you're caught up in the moment, but but I loved how just individually, I don't know if you saw it, but like my man John got off the got off the guitar, the bass, just got on her knees and he started to worship. My man Joey put down the drums, stood up, lifted his hands up. Because this is, this is not a performance for us. Like it's, it's just genuine worship. That's, that's the heart of God, that's the, like, and I don't, I don't, I don't mean that to, to be um, something that you pat us on the back with. I just pray that we wanted to do everything we could tonight to give you our heart. To give you a heart on what worship is all about. And, and I believe you felt the presence of God tonight. Anybody already feel the presence of God tonight? Come on. Amen. How you feeling, bro? Are you feeling good? Like good enough you won't stay with the brother? Huh? Everybody just start praying for his fingers that they don't cramp up. You good? You just stay with me nice and soft in the background. Because I'm actually not going to be long tonight. I, um, want to just speak to you just here real shortly and and uh, they can hit that y'all can hit that clock back there and I'll get I'll get going here and um, we just want to do a little bit extra worship on that first of all I just want to say one more time absolute honor to be here with all of you ladies um, and can we just give it up for the leadership of the prison your warden come on these officers we wouldn't be here without them amen Many of you guys, you were able to see, uh, see our heroes, uh, our counselors over here. Y'all wave. Y'all wave, counselors. Come on. We're so thankful for you. So thankful for you taking the time out of your day to come because life is busy. We thank you so much for the honor to spend time here with us today. Aren't y'all thankful they took the time to come and hang out with all of you guys? And... Uh, how many of you enjoy, have enjoyed this weekend? Come on, have you enjoyed this weekend? It's been great. How many, how many feel like your life has been changed? Come on, anybody feel like your life has been changed? Amen. And then, of course, anybody enjoyed dad last night? Come on, big guy, bring it in. He did an incredible job. I love him to death. And then, of course, my favorite preacher, my wife, preaching Thursday night. Didn't she do a great job? Love her so much. She's, she's amazing. And like we told you guys Thursday night, we've been blessed with four kids. And, and, um, and uh, what y'all don't know 
is uh, the last, before this week, the previous two weeks, usually I'm the one doing all the traveling, uh, but my wife traveled for two weeks. So I was playing Mr. Mom for two weeks. Come on. I want y'all to know, I made it. Like, I made it, baby. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, they got their veggies. Let's go. <laughs> laundry was done. We need a laundry fairy in my household. Come on, like, I'm sure moms can attest to that. Am I right? Like, it's amazing how laundry stop, packs up. And, and uh, it, was, it was hilarious. We are, we are my daughters, they, they're in all different sports, and so they love to put their hair in ponytails. And they're actually more nervous about that than anything else, leaving, uh, leaving uh, their mom leaving them with me. And, uh, and my daughter, it was so funny, but it was so sweet at the same time. My daughter uh, came up to me and they said, Dad, just do the best you can. And, and I was just like, and literally, I tried to put the ponytail together and jacked it all up. And they were just like, Dad, it's okay. You did so great. You did amazing. I'm like, how can I ever get on to you? So I got the ponytail. I got the veggies. Let's go. Like, and then something big kind of happened. My oldest daughter, she's, she's 10, and she went into middle school, and she just started kind of dating a little. Not dating. No, she didn't. Hold on. Let me take that back. That's not till at least 47 years old. But it's kind of like, you know, like, she likes some boys, and it's just like that flirtation. And, and it hit me. She's going into middle school, and I was just like, I said, uh, I said, baby girl, here's what's going to happen. I said, somebody's going to slide you a note. And it's going to say, check yes, no, or maybe. Come on, somebody. Am I right? And I said, what do you think dad wants you to check? No. And she went, no. Well, guess what happened two weeks ago? She said, Dad, I got a note. And she came up to me. She goes, and I checked yes. You disobedient child. So we've been working through that. Even today, you know, my, our alarm system at our house has like the camera on the doorbell and, and there was three young boys from the neighborhood came ringing on the doorbell. And so, thank you, Jesus, I have a little talk back mic, I can talk to them. And I just let them know, because they don't know if I'm up in that house or if I'm gone. I just talk like I was behind that door. So, and, uh, but, <laughs> it's, it's just truth, come on. Y'all remember Scared Straight? That's called barber parenting. Come on, that's what we show. We do that, man. I tell you, I want, I want, I want to share with you just very quickly a, this thought is I know that we've all been beat up in life. I know that we've all made mistakes. Anybody ever made mistakes? Come on, anybody in the house? Anybody ever fallen? Now, not even a physical fall, even though that's happened. I can tell you stories about that preaching. I tripped. I was getting baptized for the first time in front of a whole crowd. I tripped over the baptismal face first. Boom. I had to get baptized twice. That's how bad of a sinner I was. Come on, anybody else with me? Don't lie in church. Come on, raise your hand. Like, like, like. But we've all fallen. But how many know this? I, I want you to know this. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter where you've been. You messed up last night, last week, last month, last year. How many know God's got way more grace than we got problems? He wants you to just love you right where you are to help you get to where you're going. And I don't care what you might think, but I'm telling you, every person in this world, God said he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. You got a calling and you got a purpose. Prison, you might be in prison, but prison don't have to be in you, right? You got a number tagged by the state, but God knows you by your name. This ain't your home. Come on, somebody. Am I right? This is just a temporary residence. You got a purpose. You got a future. You got a hope. And how many would agree with this statement? Statement: Just because you have a fall doesn't mean you've lost your call. 
But I want you to know, just because you might be in prison, doesn't mean that God doesn't want to use you. Doesn't mean you're not somebody. You're everything that you need to be right now in this moment that God has created you to be. And I just have one thought that I want to talk to you about. Man, if you would fall, I want to talk about this topic is get back up. Come on, somebody shout, get back up. Get back up. Now say it with some attitude. Get back up. Get back up. How many know we fall, but we got we to gotta get back up? There's a man in the Bible by the name of King David. How many of you believe he was a great leader? He did great things. He had a call of God on his life. At a young age, a prophet by the name of Samuel called him out of the middle of the field, went and anointed him, and then sent him back into the field. How many of y'all like to get a, get a raise or get a promotion and then sent right back to your old job? Be kind of messed up, huh? Or God trust God's timing. But here is a man, he's, he's become a great man, became a great father, a great leader, a great warrior. He just had everything that we want to be that God has called us to be. But all of a sudden, we pick up in the story of David, there was one week where all hell broke loose in his life. It was just one moment where he fell. How many, all it can take is maybe just one thing, right? And it says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 12, verse 2. How many, want to, how many want to keep being everything that God has called you to be? Come on, anybody. Like, he says it. He says it in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. This is right at the moment, by the way, right before his worst day in his life began, his worst week. This is the moment where he saw a lady bathing on the top of a roof. Anybody know the story? The original strip club. Come on, it's up there. And he was like, look, that's funny, I don't care what you say. That's... It's just real talk. Because what we're going to read is it was there every day. And then from that, then it went on to he committed murder. And then back, the Bible says he locked himself in a place and he hit depression. But it all started with one and became a domino effect of just one decision in one moment. And right here before it happened, it says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2, it says, then it happened one evening, then it happened one evening, that David arose from his bed, and it says from his midday rest, and he walked on the roof of the king's house. In other words, if he arose from his midday rest, that means this was a daily rhythm for David. This is something he did every single day. So he knew she was going to be there. And he's king. He has his own castle. Every day, he could have woke up and is walking outside, and instead of going right, he could have gone left. And he could have gone backwards instead of going straight and going right. He's king. He could have had her removed. He could have put up a wall to where he can't go. But how many know he kind of liked it? And all of a sudden, he allowed himself to get into a place where something was going to have him make a bad decision that began the worst decision of his entire life. Because I guarantee you, where you are right now, it, it, didn't start, it started with something small, am I right? It started with one moment. But it says in the very beginning, it says, then it happened. I know there's one thing, one moment. And because David didn't have the, the strength to say no to the one thing that he knows he should not say yes to. All of a sudden, because he didn't handle it, it handled him. Are you with me? This is exactly how sin works, by the way. Sin is like getting hustled. You think you got a deal, but the deal actually got you. Come on. Are, are you following me with me? And because he didn't handle it, it handled him. It became a track record of just falling down and, and falling down. And by the way, we all got an it in our life. We all got it. We drink it. We smoke it. We text it. We call it. We back it. Oh, okay, sorry, but we... Forgive me. Bring it back. Y'all know it's true. 
You your neighbor and say, bring it back to Jesus. Bring it back. Bring it back to Jesus. But here's the deal. <laughs> but how many would agree? Are you hearing me? If you don't identify and address it, it will identify and address you. You all know exactly what it is. And you might think, that ain't that big of a deal. Like, like, why should I get rid of this one thing? Like, 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 isn't God's grace big enough for that? Yes, and there's some things you know you need to get rid of. Or else you're going to keep going down the same cycle you've always been in. You're going to keep coming back to prison. You're going to keep getting in that addiction. You're going to keep messing up and hanging out with that wrong person. Like, you're going to keep saying yes to him. When you say, you need to say, bye, Felicia. Am I right? You, 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 you got that one thing. It's kind of like, what if, what if I like said, hey, guys, I got a big, huge cruise ship. Let's go party. Let's go. You get on the boat and you're like, hey, guys, it's going to be an amazing time, but don't worry about it. I just want you to know we just got one hole in the boat. How many of y'all going to want to get off that boat? But if you look at that with life, no wonder we keep sinking. No wonder we keep falling. It's because you know that one thing that is holding you up. You know you got you to gotta get rid of it. Are you following me? You got you to gotta get rid of it. You got to learn like you get rid of it. The good thing about God is that if you give it to him, how many know he will help get you back up and to be the woman that God has called you to be? And here's what it says in Scripture. Here's, how, how did David get back up? Here's how David got back up. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, it says this. So David arose. He got up. Somebody say, get up. Get up. He got up from the ground. He did a few things. The Bible says that he washed his face, another his eyes. He anointed himself. He changed his clothes. And then he went into the house of the God and he worshiped. Then he went into his house and when he, this is after he hit depression, he already committed murder, he had that one thing, and he let that one it thing control him, and his whole life went to hell. And he ended up being in a place that he said he would never, ever be in. But he realized he got back up again. And he washed his face, and he anointed himself, he changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worship, which is why I wanted you not to forget that moment that we had just a moment ago. But he said he went up to his house, and when he requested, he sat down for food before them. Come on. He said, I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to get me some water burger. Let's go. <laughs> but the first thing he did, anybody want to get better? Come on. Are you with me? You want to be stronger and greater than you've ever been. Can I get an amen in the house? Yeah. You want to get back up again and be everything that God called you to do. we got to do what David did. And the first thing he did is he got up and he washed his face and he washed his eyes. It says in Acts 9 verse 18, immediately, how many know when you make a decision to get back up, how many know God can change things immediately, right? It says immediately, something like scales begin to fall from Saul's eyes and he could see again and he got up. He got up. All of a sudden, scales like he, he could see differently. He said, like, he washed my face, and I got to wash my eyes, and I got to be able to see different. And ladies, let me tell you, I know all ladies see different than men. They all see way better. I know this because it's happened many times. I can ask my wife, babe, where's my, where's my black shirt? And I'm going to the, I can spend 30 minutes in the closet not find it. She can walk in in two seconds and be like, it's right there. Come on, does that happen to anybody? You're like, it's amazing how she can point out. But, but you got to wash your eyes. Jesus will say this all the time to his disciples. You got eyes, but you cannot see. You got eyes, but you cannot see. And I think that's what the Lord would want to say to every single one of you. Every single one. You got eyes. But you cannot see if you could only see you the way that God sees you. If you could look into the mirror.
for the first time, and instead of being disgusted and frustrated, you could look in that mirror and you could see you the way that Jesus sees you. And I think that's the first step. Like, man, I want, I want, to, I want to get my life back again. I want to get my life back on track. But I'm going to wake up. What if tonight we're saying, you know what? Let me tell you, like, Jesus says if you give your life to him, he washes your sins away. And he thinks about it no more. So if God's not thinking about it, why are you still thinking about it? And it's time to get up and be who God has called you to be. And it might be just simply like, you got to change your eyesight. You got to stop seeing yourself as an inmate. But you got to start seeing yourself as free. You are a woman, a called by God. You are anointed. You are chosen. You are somebody, and your best days are ahead of you yet. Can I get an amen? It's time to get back up. It's time to get back up and be everything that God has called you to be. You got to change the way you see you. And then what did David do? David, David anointed himself. He, he anointed himself. This is, this is very powerful because, because the last time David took oil and anointed himself was when he was called out of the field by Samuel, and he anointed him. Now, you know what being anointed by oil is if you grew up with a praying mama or a praying grandmama. I don't know about y'all, but there was many mornings I woke up that all of a sudden I woke up and there was just oil, like, dripping from my forehead. <laughs> Like, all the way down. I'm like, what is this? And I wake up, my mom's like, shut up. Get it out of him. Jesus, get it out. Come on, anybody had that happen to you? Come on, like, I got oil. It was just like, ah. He's full of sin, God. Get it out. Get it out. But here's... <laughs> Here's what happens, though. I want you to hear this. Here's what happens, that when a prophet would anoint somebody that is called, he would anoint them, and he would anoint them with oil, and as he anointed them, he would speak over their life. They are called. They are chosen. They are, they're an instrument of God. He was praying this over David. He's saying, you are called to be the king. You are called to be the one. You will change your family legacy. You were somebody. Like he just spoke words of what he spoke life over him. He spoke power over him. He spoke freedom over him as he anointed him. And David, sometimes, sometimes this is what's got to happen. Samuel was nowhere around. But David woke up one morning. He got up. He realized, I got, I got to wash my face. And I got to see me differently. But then also I realized that Sometimes you gotta, you gotta look at yourself and you realize that you got the power in your own words. And he anointed in himself and the very words that Samuel spoke over him, he was looking in the mirror and speaking over himself. He said, I am called. I am called to be a king. I am a son of God. When's the last time you've been praying for everybody else? When's the last time you believed and you pray for you? When's the last time you looked in the mirror and said, yeah, 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 devil, you ain't got me no more. I am I'm going to see myself differently. I am a woman of God. I am called. I am chosen. You can use me. When's the last time you just had just like just the power and the authority? Like, I ain't going to let this life shake me no more. And if you don't realize, I want you to understand, how many believe that there's power in your words? Come on, anybody in the house from over here? Come on. How many believe in the power of this word? Come on, anybody believe in the power of this word? How many believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And what he spoke 2019 years ago is the same word that he spoke on the inside of you. How many believe that's for today? And there's something powerful when you realize that there's power in your words. you got everything that you need on the inside of you. And I want to prove it to you. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to close. I'm going to prove it to you. Every pastor has three closings. Y'all say one. Okay. The power of your words. Here's one I want you to see, the power of your words. I've used this illustration before, but I want you to get it. Everybody put the number 10 in your head. And when I say go, I want you to count down silently. When I say speak, I want you to yell out that number. 
Y'all with me? Or do I need to say it again for all my C students? Come on, somebody. I'm a C, anybody a C student like me? Let's go. Put the number 10 in your head. When I say go, count down silently. When I say speak, shout out that number. Ready and go. Speak. How many of y'all just wanted to say seven? Come on. I, I, we got some slow counters and we got some fast counters, right? Again, everybody right here. How many believe we got power in our words? Here's what I want you to get. What happened, you started counting, what happened when you shouted that number? Your mind what? Stopped counting. The Bible says that it's the power of the renewing of the mind that changes your life. I want you to get this. The words that are coming out of your mouth are so powerful that your mind has to stop to listen to what your mouth has to say because whatever comes out of your mouth controls your mind and whatever controls your mind controls your body. Oh, come on, I'm trying to preach to somebody tonight. You got to realize you got the power on the inside of you and you just got to wake up and you got to wash your face and say, I'm going to see myself differently today. I am a called. I am chosen. I am somebody. I am a person of influence. Come on, are you with me? Somebody shout, I am called. I am called. I am somebody. I am the daughter of the Most High. My life ain't over. Come on, are you with me? Like it's time to get back up. It's time to be everything that God has called you to be. I poured a little bit more water than I expected. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. Can we close out here in just a moment? Like, I literally, like, I'm not trying to try hype you up just to hype you up, but I mean this from the bottom of my soul. You can be the best mom you've ever been. You can be the best woman you've ever been. But it's time just like you can be in the middle of depression and addiction, but what if tonight you got back up again and you went home tonight and you looked in that mirror for the first time and you said, no, 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 devil, you ain't got my life, you ain't got my family, you don't got my calling, I'm going to see myself differently tonight. I'm not an inmate, I am somebody. I'm going to wash myself tonight. I'm going to declare over my life, any day now, my freedom, I'm going home. Any day now, I'm going to see my baby. Somebody shout, any day now. Any day now. Any day now. Somebody shout, get up. You don't have to know the whole Bible to speak the Bible. You just got to believe everything on the, that you need is on the inside of you. The moment you see you, the way that God sees you, and every morning, if you start off speaking life over yourself, it doesn't matter what the day throws at you, ain't nothing going to rob your joy. He said he changed his clothes. He changed his clothes. Notice he didn't wear the same clothing, meaning ch change has to happen. If you really want the power of God to work in your life, you can't leave here the same. Like, you can't leave here the same. And they went into the house, and they worshiped. I'm closing with this. Proverbs 24, verse 16 says this. The godly man may trip seven times, but they what will get back up again. How many believe God's still got a future for you, amen? Come on, do you really believe that? He's got a future for you. He's got a future for you. And here's my, here's my scripture that I want to pray over you. This is my prayer for you. Psalms 51, verse 10 and 12. Let's go. Verse 10 and 12. Here's my prayer for you. I want, I want you to receive this over your life. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. 
renew. It's not that you don't love Jesus, but I'm trying to get you back up again in a steadfast spirit where you won't fall again, but you'll stay in tune with Jesus. Are you with me? Father, renew in them a steadfast spirit. Father, don't cast me away from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12, restore in me the joy of your salvation and uphold for me your generous spirit. Restore to me, Lord, the joy of your salvation. Remember that moment when you first met Jesus? I want you to think about that. Maybe it was in Sunday school. Maybe it was in church. Just curious, how many of you have been in church at one point in your life? Let me see your hand. Okay. You can put it down. For me as a pastor, that puts the priority that I know I've got to create a culture to where we don't lose you in the church. But at the same time, that lets me know that you know you know what it means to love Jesus. And do you remember that moment sitting in the pew, in the chair, wherever you might have been, in that moment you first met Jesus? Do you remember how you worshiped? Do you remember how you prayed? Do you remember how you believed? And I think that's what the scripture is speaking to. God, Father, restore that joy that I felt in that first moment that I met you, Jesus. That's going to help you get back up and take on every day. And I believe there's many of you, you need that tonight. So with every head bowed and every eye closed. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. But he died to be number one in your life. If you're here tonight, like Brandon, I need the Lord to restore the joy of my salvation. I need that tonight. I need Jesus more than I ever have. I'm tired of being knocked down. But I'm ready to get back up and be who he has called me to be. Don't raise your hand if you don't mean it. I'm going to ask you. Hands are already going up. On the count of three, shoot them up with passion, saying, I need you, Jesus. One, two, three. Boom, shoot them up. Thank you, Lord. Just keep them up. Keep them up. This is a sign of surrender. Thank you, Jesus. This is what it's all about. Everybody shout this prayer together as a family. Shout, Jesus, Jesus thank, you thank you for dying on the cross for me. Wash my sins clean. Make me new. Make me new. And make me, whole. make me whole. From this day forward, Jesus, day forward, Jesus I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Jesus, Restore in me, Restore in me. The, joy the joy of you. Of you. Let me just pray over you. Father, I thank you for every lady here. I lift up their life. Father, I pray that they begin to see themselves differently, the way you see them. They're not a mistake. They're not a problem. They're, 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 they are love. They, they are everything that you created them to be. Father, you don't see them as a mistake. You see them exactly the way you created them. And Father, I pray that they just get that out of their head. And they realize that they can still be everything that you've called them to be, God. Restore the relationships with children that need to be restored. Relationship with husbands that need to be restored, God. Father, I pray that it doesn't rob them of their sleep, but they know in Jesus' name that their babies and their families are being taken care of. Father, let heaven be our end game. And Father, I pray that no matter what the enemy tries to knock us out with, that spirit of getting back up every day, Father, just rises up on the inside of us. And we'll never give up on you, Jesus, because you, we know you've never given up on us. Bless their life. Bless their marriage, their family, their situation. And Father, tonight we give it to you. Thank you for this weekend. In Jesus' name. And if you believe it, can you just say amen one more time and give Jesus all. Come on, can we give Jesus all the praise that he deserves? Come on. 
Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go, our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially, but our partners, they do. They send us even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and we'll be back with you very soon once again.